Hello, everyone. Your patient has a new diagnosis of interstitial lung disease, aka ILD. So what is ILD? ILD is an umbrella term that describes fibrotic lung disease, and those fibrotic changes impair gas exchange. Clinically, how do we categorize ILD, and how do we treat it? Let's get started. How can we categorize possible causes of ILD? Most people learn the alphabet soup of ILD, but a more clinically relevant way to think of ILD is to use these five categories. Think of the mnemonic PRIME for what to ask your patients or what to look for on chart review. Number one, post-infectious. Has your patient had any infections that could cause ILD, such as a viral pneumonia, tuberculosis, or a fungal infection? Number two, rheumatologic. So could their ILD be associated with a systemic disorder such as rheumatoid arthritis, vasculitis, amyloidosis, systemic sclerosis, or sarcoidosis? Number three, an idiopathic ILD. This is the diagnosis when all other potential causes have been ruled out. A few subtypes of idiopathic ILD include idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF. This is the most common form. Nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, or NSIP, and cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, or COP. We'll come back to these subtypes later. Number four, medication induced. So look over their meds. See if you find any common culprits, including amiodarone, methotrexate, nitrofurantoin. If you want to know if a med could be a culprit, Pneumotox is a great resource that we've linked in the description for a comprehensive list of medications that have been associated with ILD. And lastly, number five environmental exposures. Now, there are a ton of different exposures to ask your patients about, but some big ones to remember include birds, asbestos, silica, coal, and tobacco. Once we have a general understanding of which category of ILD our patient fits into, we can start thinking about what kind of treatment they'll need. Chronic therapies for ILD fall into two big categories. Number one, antifibrotics, and number two, immunosuppressants. So first up, the antifibrotic agents. The options for antifibrotics are perfenidone, brand name Espirite, and entetinib, brand name Ofev. Good news, all patients with evidence of progressive fibrosis, no matter the type of ILD, are candidates for antifibrotics. While they don't reverse the fibrosis that's already there, they do help slow the decline in lung function, specifically the FVC or the functional vital capacity. Our next line of treatment is immunosuppressant agents. These include mycophenolate and azathioprine. They are not for everyone. Here, the alphabet soup is actually relevant. Immunosuppressants should not be used in patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF. This guidance comes from the PANTHER trial, which showed that compared to patients in the placebo arm, patients with IPF who were treated with immunosuppression had increased mortality, more hospitalizations, and more adverse events. Not so good. So altogether, we should avoid immunosuppressants in patients with IPF, but patients with any other category of ILD are candidates for immunosuppression. Okay, so let's bring it all together. We have five clinically relevant categories of ILD. So does your patient best fit the post-infectious, rheumatologic, idiopathic, medication-induced, or environmental exposure category of ILD? Remember, within idiopathic, we have subtypes, including IPF, NSIP, and COP. Chronic management of ILD includes two types of medications, the antifibrotics and immunosuppression. Antifibrotics such as perfenidone and entetinib can be considered in all patients with progressive fibrosis, no matter the category. On the other hand, the immunosuppressive agents such as mycophenolate and azathioprine should not be given to patients with IPF, but can be considered for all other categories of ILD. Thanks so much for watching. For more learning on ILD, Check out the Core IM Gray Matter segment on ILD and high-risk medication prescribing on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube. See you next time.